Good morning. Today, um, we are focused in on Mark chapter uh, 11, and I'm going to talk about Jesus cleansing the temple. Of course, this is um, Passion Week. Uh, maybe we're a week behind here, but uh, this is where we're at in our reading plan. And so uh, Jesus goes into the temple, and um, out of his zeal for the temple, he uh, overturns uh, money tables, he creates all kinds of uh, a, a chaos um, in the temple because people were, um, were, were using and le leveraging the uh, temple for um, evil intentions. Uh, for instance, as you look at this particular passage, um, Jesus connected what he was doing to a uh, quote out of Isaiah 56, verse 7. Uh, and that particular chapter is an interesting chapter because it's about um, welcoming the foreigner, uh, particularly into the context of worship. And, uh, and so here Jesus says, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, for all the nations. And I think that is um, pretty profound. Um, but you have made it a den of robbers. Now, what's interesting about this, this is Passover time and people are coming in and they uh, are sacrificing, coming into Jerusalem and they're sacrificing. And um, oftentimes those that lived far away, they would buy the sacrifices there in Jerusalem because it didn't make sense for them to bring their own sacrifices that far. And many times uh, it was foreigners that were uh, coming in. Um, those who were perhaps not of um, natural descent um, or maybe a little bit different um, culturally, but yet uh, they were being taken advantage of by uh, people who were selling sacrifices in the temple. It's almost like supply and demand, right? If I can get more money out of you, I'm going to get more money out of you. I'm going to take advantage of this situation because I know you're stuck. And um, I, I don't know for sure that's what's going on, but that's what it seems like is happening, with just, especially with Jesus connecting this quote from Isaiah, um, making this into, you're making this into a, a, a den of robbers. So I, there's three things I think are, are happening here. Um, I think oppression has taken place in the temple, which, which is why this is such a big deal uh, to Jesus. Um, people were taking advantage of other people. I think discrimination was taking place. Um, I, that's why I think that Jesus quoted Isaiah 56, which is all about the foreigner coming in uh, into the context of worship. Um, and matter of fact, in the, even his the, the verse he chose to quote was um, that my my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, all right? Uh, and, and then I think perhaps the biggest thing that was going on is uh, what I will just say is vain worship, that um, these people that were oppressing, taking advantage of those people, discrimination um, that was taking place, these people that were discriminating and oppressing Others um, were essentially robbing God of his glory. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that they were treating something that was very sacred um, as if it was common or even worse, um, a place for personal gain. And, uh, and, and so that essentially they were making the worship of a holy God uh, during this incredible um, season, Passover season, uh, the celebration they were taking advantage of that and um, essentially rendering the worship of God meaningless, um, which is uh, vain worship. And uh, I guess the challenge that God was um, working in my own heart as I was thinking through this, I was thinking through, I, I, I know that right, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God manifests his presence, not only individually in us, but as a church. And, and so in, in my head, I'm going, how, how do I do this in my own body? How do I treat my body? Or how do I treat the things in the church as if they're comet, um, as opposed to my body being sacred? Meaning that um, 
I care about what comes out of my body. I care about my actions and my attitudes and my thoughts. And I care about those things because I will, I'm, I'm, I'm called to be a holy person, all right? Meaning I'm set apart for God. God set me apart for his purposes. So uh, just as he is holy, he's called me to be holy. And so um, how am I defiling the temple um, of the Holy Spirit in my own, in, in my own uh, uh, body? And then asking myself the same question in terms of the church. How do I treat the church as something common as opposed to something uh, sacred? And so it's been, it was a challenge for me to um, really think through those things. And um, one of the reasons that we talk about pursuing holiness in our lives is just this very thing, um, is that God manifests his presence in us. and in the church. And, and so we want to treat these things as if they are sacred because they are, we are set apart uh, for God. So um, uh, perhaps that's a challenge for you as it was for me. Father, as I think through this idea that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, as I think through the fact that your church is the man manifestation of your presence through your people, God, we want to treat both of those things as if they are very, very sacred, because they are. You have set them apart. You have set me apart individually, but you have also set First Baptist apart as a church, as a local church, to manifest your glory to the nations. And so, Father, I pray that you would help me to cleanse my temple. Cleanse, actually, it's your temple that, Father, I would um, be very sensitive to the leadership of your spirit and be obedient to him. I would worship from a pure, sincere heart, not out of just rote uh, practice. Father, I pray that uh, you would continue to form us into the image of Jesus Christ, who is holy who is righteous, who is our Savior and our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings.